Okay, hi, welcome and welcome back. And welcome back to, I guess, a reaction type video. Do you not mind my face? I don't know what's going on. I'm in a lot of pain though with my chin and my nose. Basically, I don't know what's happening. Ignore it, please. But I need to take myself off. With the entire Mafia series now finally finished, we can move on to the next playthrough series, which funnily enough also has story games. The Witcher. So I was originally going to go into The Witcher 3 straight off the bat without any like knowledge or experience of the past two games in the series, which are 1 and Witcher 2. But I was persuaded basically not to. Well, persuaded? No. I was warned not to. And to instead watch a recap video of The Witcher 1 and then play through The Witcher 2 to finally play through The Witcher 3. So it's going to be a tiny bit longer before we get to The Witcher 3. But considering I really do love getting invested in the story, insert examples. I think it's probably best to, you know, delve into Witcher 1, Witcher 2. I don't know how much they overlap or anything, but I am excited to follow Geralt's story. I haven't watched their Netflix show either. I do want to watch it, but I think I'm going to wait until after I finish Witcher 3, which will probably be a long time. It is a long game, but again, I am really excited. So we have... This one I think is the one with the most views, the Witcher 1 in-depth story recap by Psychic Sidekick. I'm not sure. This is the one we're going to be watching today. It's the longest one. It's the one with the most views. I hope it's the one that is like best to watch, you know what I mean? And then probably tomorrow we'll start the Witcher 2, which I don't believe the Witcher 2 is long. Let me check. Witcher. Okay, so it's like 24 hours. How long is The Witcher 1? 35 hours. God, the game is long. The Witcher 3 is like 50 hours, so we have another Red Dead series, but I'm excited. Plus, The Witcher also has DLCs. So, I think we should just get into the like reaction part of it, I guess. Let's watch. Five years ago marked the end of the Great War with the Empire Nilfgaard and the death of the legendary witcher Geralt of Rivia. But this is video games, so retcon that, Geralt's alive and he's running through the woods. Oh! All tuckered out, our boy goes down, but his fellow wolf school witchers had some good looking out. Lucky for Geralt, his little midnight frolic had taken place near Kaer Morhen, the witcher's home base. Post up for some R&R, &R, Geralt hooks up with Triss Marigold, who's excited to hear all There's about what? what her old friend's been doing. I know you guys saw those physics. That's crazy. Until Geralt shuts her down saying he doesn't remember anything from his past life. But right when things start getting good, oh. a bunch of filthy peasants raid the keep and kill the mood. In between incinerating plebeians, Triss manages to catch a glimpse of the leaders of the attack. Some Harry Potter looking dork named the Professor, and the angriest Hawaiian I've ever seen. The two had used the battle as a distraction to roll dirty to the basement and snag up all the secrets to the Witcher's mutagens. The resident FNG Little Leo tries to shoot back, but he ends up getting put down. The remaining Witchers pour one out, split up, and go on the hunt, ready to track down the men who attacked them and reclaim their secrets. Geralt locks down the south, heading to the city of Vizima and Temeria. 
Immediately upon reaching the outskirts, he already knows he's in for a treat. Demon dogs are eating people out in the middle of the street. And well, that rhymes. Geralt catches the young boy Alvin, barely escaping a pack by the skin of his teeth. And suddenly, this kid starts floating around, no. glowing, talking about the Ice Age or something. This was cool and all, but Geralt really didn't give a shit at that. When did this come out? Sorry, I know I'm pausing it. I don't want to speak over it, though. Because they they look like Sims characters to me. 2007. When did The Sims 3 come out? 2009. The Witcher 1 is older than The Sims 3. He learns something new every day. At that point, he was busy trying to track down the group that he now knew as Salamandra. Scoping out the area, Geralt hooks up with some of his legacy buds. Shawnee? Don't you recognize me? Whatever happened to you? She looks like Poison Ivy. And Zoltan Chive. True to a Witcher. Died, came back to life. Nobody's seen him for five years, and he wants to know if something's wrong. Geralt, of course, having no idea who they are, takes their word for it and pals around with them. Ending up the errand boy for the bigwigs in the outskirts community, Geralt manages to scrape together that he was preceded by another witcher named Berengar, also seeking Salamandra. But nobody's seen or heard from him since Geralt got into town. With the dirty work of half the village under his belt, Geralt's assigned one final task, finding the source of the this Hellhounds. This is an interesting combat system. Being told system. to start with the witch Abigail, because witches must be evil, Geralt works with her to possess the small boy Alvin with a demon, who's gonna tell him where the Hellhounds come from. It's a great idea. They deduce at this point that the creatures are created by the malice of the very people Geralt's been working for. Finally given the location of the Salamander hideout, our boy rolls out to make some waves. Mid ass kicking session, he's given the surprise of learning that most of the locals had been working with Salamandra all along, and also that the pissed off Hawaiian from Kaer Morin was actually named Azar Javed. Who's Azar Javed? A powerful mage. You're no match for him. Ready to pack it up, he runs into <laughs> we'll Abigail on his that. way out. The townspeople were rousing for a classic witch hunt, post up just outside. Geralt is then given the option to serve her up or protect her from the angry mob. Either way, scoring himself a pass into the city of Azima. But on his way in, his chops get busted by some mire and scrub and shipped off to prison. Absa fucking lootly beautiful. Not about to just stand around, Geralt bargains to hunt the cockatrice in the city sewer in exchange for his freedom. Knee deep in shit, he bumps into Siegfried, a knight of the Order of the Flaming Rose. The Order was a group dedicated to protecting the citizens of Temeria, even hunting monsters for them. This, funnily enough, especially the music when he was in the cell, reminds me a lot of Final Fantasy. Specifically Final Fantasy XVI, the... Duh. Okay, I can't. Wait, no mind. Duh, nah, no, wait. Duh. Okay, yeah, no. I, I know how this song goes in my head. I cannot replicate that out into sounds for you guys to... Yes, like the da, na, no. What is it like? Da, da, da. The the combat music. You know what I mean? No, it's not. No, it is the combat music. It's the combat music, but especially like the setting too. I think it has a very similar setting. I say sixteen specifically because is it a similar time period? It's very like olden. Old olden is not the word. It is very. It's not as modern. I think it's very peri peri periodic, Let let's just say that. An act that threatened putting the witchers out of their job. The two squat up and take down the cockatrice, getting- Also, quickly, I don't know about witches, like I don't have any knowledge of the witcher entirely, so I think that's actually really cool, well, very cool. It's interesting that I'm guessing he was chosen to be a witcher, he died, he came back to life and was granted the title. Of a witcher. It's interesting though, I wonder if playing it you get to really feel how, I mean it's an old game, I don't know how in depth they would have gone, but I think if they were to remake it, it'd be interesting to see how Geralt would feel knowing that he's had this life with all these people that he just doesn't remember and how that mentally could affect him. Again, I don't know if it goes in depth in the game or if Geralt's like, eh. Sorry, buddy, I don't know who you are. Or if, like, you really feel his confusion and 
perhaps even annoyance at the fact that he lost his, his basically kind of his life with all these people. Like, yeah, sure, he's back. He has this one, but all his memories, all his past experiences, from what it seems like, they're gone. And I just think that'd be really interesting if the game played out and you got to see how it affects him. Again, I don't know if it would go that in depth, considering it came out in 2007. But if they were to remake it, I think that would be a really interesting thing to add in and show if it wasn't there previously. Coming out of the sewer ASAP. Now in the beautiful plague-ridden city streets, Geralt makes a stop at the house of Raymond, collar pop and bad boy and detective extraordinaire. He racks up a list of names whose personal space he believes Geralt should invade. And invade he does, eventually excusing Vivaldi, the dwarven bank owner who doesn't own his bank, Taller, the shady fence who's actually Temerian secret intelligence, guard captain Vincent, who's investigating Salamandra just as hard, and the merchant Levarden, who actually invites Geralt to his anti-Salamander secret society, leaving only the too obvious Crime Lord Ramsmead and the turbo nerd Kalkstein. Doing a little extra credit though reveals that Javed's been bending you over a barrel. Mer this is, uh, this is like Baldur's Gate 3 gameplay. I played a bit of it, I wasn't very good at it, although this does look a bit like Darker and Darker, which I love Darker and Darker, it's very much Fun. It's, it's very much fun. It's very fun. But yeah, a mix of darker and darker and especially this part. This is very much darker and darker. Also this, the alchemy, like the potions, they look exactly the same too. Is it the same people that made it? I don't know, but Baldur's Gate 3 combat wise and darker and darker inventory system. Murdering and disguising himself as Raymond halfway through your investigation. And the only way to repay somebody when they do you dirty is to give it back twice as hard. But as everyone Real. knows, even amidst life-threatening chaos, there's always time to get fucked up with your bros. Shawnee reuniting Geralt with who used to be his best friend, Dandelion the Bard. Although just a brief respite, Dandelion shares stories from Geralt's past and helps rekindle his search for his former identity. Collaborating with his former suspects, Geralt devises a plan to lead Java to the magic tower in the nearby swamp, where his fire magic will be useless. But while preparing, Geralt's caught between the skirmishes of Knights of the Order and Scoia'tael, anti-human freedom fighters. Geralt can choose a side or ignore the conflict, but refocuses on Javed once it's resolved. Finally, Okay, so this definitely seems as if it's um, choice-based. I don't know if the endings change depending on the choices that you make throughout the story. Story. I mean, you could choose to attack or like leave it there. If I'm not mistaken though, what Geralt doing is now is going to get his old self back, so like his memories and stuff, which is, is really cool that they, um, I mean, I can imagine him not wanting to go get it all back, so. You ready for a throwdown at the tower? Javed goes full bitch mode, crying at Harry Potter for some backup. Even 2v1? Geralt gives him an extra spicy dicking. But of course, a pervert like HP's always got some chloroform on deck, knocking out Geralt long enough for the two to escape. Oh, Fuck. fake. Geralt wakes up to a half-naked Triss Marigold. That's Much more shit could have happened. After uh, stretching his legs a little bit, Triss informs Geralt that the two have been invited by Luvarden to his social at the inn, and that she's been detecting some weird magical anomalies within the city and she'd like Geralt's help in finding the source. After establishing a triangulation field for Triss, Geralt shows up down to party. He rubs elbows with the 1%, and even gets to meet Princess Ada, whom he cured the curse of the Striga on years ago. She says a bunch of words to him, but then they fuck, so Geralt forgives oh. her. Eventually what? meeting with Lavarden himself, he tasks Geralt with destroying Salamandra's drug network, their primary source of income. Geralt's super hyped to get his DEA on, but gets his flow jacked by a disgusting street urchin. Master Richer! What, boy? The bank's been robbed! Master Velorad said we should fetch a witcher! Apparently shit hit the fan over at the bank, with Scoia'tael held up inside. With everybody loving to get the witcher in their business, Geralt can decide if he wants to help the Order slaughter the non-humans, or assist in the Scoia'tael's escape. Now free to bring down the hammer on crackhead degenerates across the land, Geralt destroys drug operations one by one. As he's clearing out the final batch of salamanders, however, it's he witnesses mafia. them communicating through a Hartman's mirror. 
Geralt then claims the mirror's power source, and catches a glimpse of who the salamanders were speaking with as he exits the area. Back in the street, he watches as a werewolf tears the remaining salamandra apart. After the slaughter, he's approached by the beast, who claims to be Guard Captain Vincent. Geralt then has the opportunity to attack Vincent, but if you don't think having a werewolf for a bro is the tightest shit, then you can get out of my face. Returning to Lavarden and Triss, Geralt hands over the mirror's power source. Triss discerns she'll most likely be able to open up a portal into a salamandra base using the stone, but in the meantime, Geralt should gather allies to assist him in the assault, leaving, once again, the choice between the Order and the Scoia'tael. Before he leaves, Triss also tells Geralt she's located the source of the anomaly, the young boy Alvin who's entered the city of Azima. Alvin was in the care of Shawnee, but she wouldn't hand him over to Triss, most likely because she knew Geralt was macking on that. But she doesn't have much of a choice, as Alvin's kidnapped by Salamandra right before Geralt shows up. Only Geralt was what? I've never heard that word before. Um, relying? Sounds like it'd be relying. Banking, kind of? I don't know. With Dandelion's help, Geralt finds the boy, and it marks the beginning of the Great Waifu War. Geralt is then given the chance to bring Alvin back to either Shawnee or Triss, marking them as his waifu for the rest of the game. With his bro selected and matters resolved, Geralt is then ready to attack the Salamandra. Geralt goes balls deep into the underground base, with Javed once again into something else too. <laughs> true to form, running like a bitch. The professor, not so lucky this time, is forced to stand and fight. With little Ooh. effort, he sends Harry Potter to hell to meet his parents, and finds a note on his corpse, incriminating Princess Ada as the primary collaborator with Salamandra, looking to stage a coup in her father's absence. Chased for Those types of glasses really freak me out. I really don't like them, actually. Like, I don't know, they just... They, I, they remind me of Coraline. Divergent, I know, but like, I don't like them. In the them. caves by a pissed off Queen Kikamore, Geralt ends up in the city's dike, Hold on. where he's surrounded by Princess Ada and her men. Resigned to his fate, Triss's intervention saves Geralt once again as she teleports him away. Geralt's magical one-way trip sends him way out into the boonies, near the small town of Murky Waters. Ooh. Hiking into town, he's received by none other than Dandelion. Dandelion speaks as a messenger for Triss, and explains that the two of them had been sent to Murky Waters to look after Alvin, who along with Triss was attacked while Geralt was away, and in a panic used his powers to teleport to a random location, that place being Murky Waters. Triss even sending a diamidium amulet with Dandelion that would suppress Alvin's magical powers while she wasn't around. Wanting to keep busy, and more importantly get paid, Geralt gets himself caught up in local affairs, most of which revolved around the girl Alina and her upcoming marriage to the merchant Julian from Kovir. But like with all good love stories, it ends with everybody killing each other. Alina's murdered by her jealous sister Selina, who is then in turn murdered by Adam, the ma- Um, okay, well, I'm gathering the, um, the theme of the game, lack of happiness. <laughs> I think. Man who loved Alina but wasn't gonna be her husband, and all, all you really gotta know is they turned into ghosts. Oh. And Julian, the world's ugliest man, and Alina's fiance, wants Geralt to do whatever he can to free the girl's soul. With Dandelion's aid, he helps the spirits move on, earning Julian's thanks, who's secretly probably really happy all this shit happened before he married into it. With their one cause for joy thoroughly stamped out, Geralt decides to help the town with the one other thing he can. The townspeople in the Voidianoi along the coast haven't been getting along, and apparently the village had already hired somebody to deal with this, but with no results. Investigating these rumors, Geralt comes across a ghost, the witcher who's been one step ahead of him since the outskirts, Berengar. Berengar admits that he was the one that was supposed to resolve the conflict, but had no interest in completing the task. And when questioned about his association with Salamandra, all he admits is that he was forced to participate in their experiments. Geralt figures if he's just gonna act like a buster, he'll just leave him be, and leaves to meet the Lady of the Lake, a respected oh. Voidianoi leader. The okay. Lady claims she's not down with any of the violence going on, and in fact, it's the sea monster Dagon, 
leading the Voidianoi to attack the people of the town. Ew. Geralt then fronts straight to Dagon's altar and props him for showing up, but he still got his ass kicked. While departing, <laughs> Berengar had tracked Geralt down. His guilty conscience finally getting the better of him, he divulged that he was the one who sold out Kaer Morin and Alvin and pretty much caused all the trouble for Geralt throughout the entire game. Hating his oh. fate as an outcast and a mutant, Berengar had done all this in hopes that Salamandra could reverse the process of being a witcher. Geralt can choose to show a little mercy and understanding or hit him with a little slap and tickle before leaving the island. Returning to the mainland, Dandelion becomes the bearer of bad news, telling Geralt that local Scoia'tael have taken over murky waters and are holding Alvin there as a hostage. Oh, with order forces approaching and the town about to become a battleground, Geralt is given the opportunity to join either side or remain neutral and just try to get his friends out alive. Whichever side's taken... If Alvin dies, I don't think the theme is lack of happiness, I think it's depression. Yeah. Alvin loses his shit once again, teleporting himself out of there, even through the deterrence of his amulet. With okay. no trace of the boy left to follow, Geralt and Dandelion bounce out of there, heading by boat back to Vizima. You leave for five minutes and Grandma falls asleep smoking in bed again. But to be fair, the fires are the least of Vizima's problems right now. All out war is broken out between the Scoia'tael and the Order of the Flaming Rose. King Foltest is back on the scene, however, and he's down to grind booty on both sides for making a battleground of his city. Chancing by Geralt as he enters the city, Foltest brings him back to the castle to post up and discuss a proposition with him. Well, maybe a little less proposition, maybe a little more, do what I say, I'm the king. Foltest confides that Ada has relapsed into her curse, becoming a Strigo once again. And he wants Geralt to fix her stupid bullshit, even if that means killing her. Geralt promptly re-enters the city and begins his search. His first stop, a combat clinic established by Shawnee. While still objectively a garbage tier waifu, her clinic treats victims from both sides of the war, so I guess she has that going for her. But this also has the more aggressive of both sides, shooting flames straight at her clinic. Geralt hooks her up with a freebie, then heads to the nearby swamp cemetery just outside the wall, continue- With a what? Okay, it's doing good at explaining the story, but I kinda wish it was a bit more serious. I'm trying to learn here, buddy. Please? Continuing his search for Ada. Upon entering the mire, Geralt has his first encounter with the Grand Master of the Order of the Flaming Rose. Jackie ja Jackie ja ja Jackie Alderberg. Jackie don't want no trouble and the two part ways, but not we before imparting the impression of being a huge creep. Finally arriving at the crypt where Addis holed up, surrounded by grown men who are apparently too afraid to go in after her, Geralt makes his move. Killing her on the spot or occupying her until morning to re-break the curse. Geralt solves the problem of Foltest Striga for the time being. And the king shows his appreciation by divulging the location of the Salamandra headquarters, an old manor in those very swamps. Mm -hmm. Geralt drops bombs, okay. breaking his way to the heart of the mansion. And with nowhere else for him to run, finally gets the chance to fight and kill Azar Javed. But before leaving... Geralt's confronted by a familiar image on the Hartman's mirror in Javed's lab. The Grand Master of the Order of the Flaming Rose himself. The Order and Salamandra had been in bed since the very beginning, with Javed directly corresponding with the Grand Master. Upon his return, Geralt relays what he's learned to the King. Hearing what he has to say, Voltest offers Geralt 8,000 US dollars of legal tender to bring him the head of the Grand Master. Getting money's all Geralt ever knew. So he makes one final push to the Order Headquarters and confronts Jackie. It's a baby burrito! <laughs> Jackie fears the dick, so he starts trying to explain his motives to Geralt. That as a powerful mage, he has had visions of Ithlanae's prophecy, an apocalypse known as the Great White Frost, with the entire world freezing over, even pulling Geralt into his vision with him. He had been using Salamandra to breed an army of super soldiers akin to witchers but lacking free will or morals. He had planned to use these soldiers to shepherd the people south to safety when the cold hit, but Jackie was naive to think he could escape the dig. Disagreeing with Jackie's ends justify the means the mentality, and sick of his Disneyland nightmare bullshit, Geralt unleashes a hot load of justice upon the Grand Master. 
Before they can finish their battle though, the King of the Wild Hunt in the form of an apparition appears. The Spectre claims that he and Geralt have history together, and that he desires oh. to take Jackie's soul. Geralt can comply with this request, or he can take on the King himself and remind him why not only man must fear the dick. Delivering the final blow to Jackie himself, Geralt finally awakes from the illusion with Dan- Could a sword go through armor? Or was there like a gap in the armor where like it, you know, goes on and off? Because uh, I'm not like, uh, that's like steel, iron. I don't know if a sword could uh, go through that. <laughs> and a lion there waiting for him. The two collect themselves from the ordeal they've just went through. And while this is never confirmed, Geralt finds a diamidium amulet, the exact same as the one he gave to Alvin, but- Oh look! Why would he have gone through? Doesn't make sense. Older and worn on the body of the Grand Master, and the Grand Master's morals change based on the things that Geralt teaches Alvin earlier in the game, leading many to believe that Alvin had teleported into the past and grown into the Grand Master of the Order of the Flaming Rose. The two flatter the thought, but agree that they'll probably just never know. You're exaggerating again. Something ends, something begins. I'll take the last of the stolen secrets, take a deep breath, and move on. Psyched to be finished with this game's shitty combat system, Geralt snags his dinero from the king and hits the road, but on his way out realizes something ain't right. Some sperm burglar had broken into the palace and was looking to get at the king. Geralt yells at him to assert his dominance, then cuts his arm off. Fuck yeah. The two pull back the assassin's mask to get a look at his pretty face, and boom, there's 30 hours of your life gone. Okay, so I think who killed the king in the ending of which one? Because someone in the comments said it looked like Geralt. The mysterious assassin is the first kingslayer, the one who tried unsuccessfully to slay King Voltus. He attempted during the ending of the original game. Geralt, who was in the process of receiving his reward for destroying Salamandra and removing Jackie's de Aldersberg, stopped and killed him. Okay, is a witcher. Okay, let me read the wiki. Why does it say to be continued? Is there no actual answer or do you find it out in... Why is it not a straightforward answer? Okay, so apparently there are plot holes. I might find it out in which two or three. I'm not sure. Maybe I shouldn't look into this too much because I don't want spoilers. Okay, I'm gonna not read any more of that because I don't want... I don't want spoilers at all. I think I saw somewhere that there was two endings. Oh, this is by the original Witcher. So the story of The Witcher 2 begins just after the events of the first part, but you don't have to know the previous events because the sequel has a completely new story and then it's the protagonist Geralt, east of Wazima, the main location of the first game, to where... Oh, sends him east of Wazima. Okay, the... The Witcher will meet some old friends, Triss, the poet Dandelion, and Zoltan. Those who played the first game will recall some of the cast. A few dialogues refer to the first game, but recognizing these references just gives a little more meaning. If The Witcher 2 is your first encounter with Geralt, you will smoothly enter the story. Okay, that's good to know. This is by the original Witch account though. So I think just for a little bit of more recapization, recapers capization let's watch this one it's really getting ingrained luckily i don't have to have too much knowledge of the first one but it'd be nice to know the references and to also know what Geralt has been through i also feel like knowing what Geralt has been through can help me understand how he may react to certain things in witcher 2 and 3 considering these games seem to be pretty heavy so i would like to have that more that tiny bit more knowledge of Geralt himself, his past experiences, and I guess who he kind of is as a person. Five years after the Great War, the Northern Kingdoms continued to suffer. Rivers flowed red with elven blood, and life was cheaper than a fistful of coppers. The world needed a hero. They said he arrived on the wings of a storm to help the downtrodden. They said he'd gone mad and died. They called him the Sword of Destiny. They said he returned, for only evil can vanquish evil. In truth, Geralt of Rivia reappeared, barely breathing and bereft of memory, near the Witcher's citadel of Kaer Morhen. 
The wild hunt war's omens sped across the sky, while in Vizima a cow gave birth to a two-headed calf. The wild hunt is a DLC for The Witcher 3, right? All other claims are legend. At Kaer Morhen, Geralt recovered, yet even his one-time lover, the powerful sorceress Triss Merigold, could not restore his memory. The calm would not last. Armed brigands led by the sorcerer Azar Javid and the professor, a killer for hire, attacked the citadel. Though bandit blood stained Kaer Morhen's walls, the attackers made off with their prize. The secrets of Witcher mutation, concealed for centuries, disappeared in a flash of magic. The Witchers set off on a search, as tradition ordained, to the four corners of the world. Geralt of Rivia went south to the Temerian capital of Vizima, where he'd once cured a princess of a curse. Vizima. When the cat is away, King Foltes was nowhere in sight and Vizima was in turmoil. The Order of the Flaming Vizima. Rose, Grand Master Jacques de Aldersberg at its head, pursued its crusade against non-humans. With whips and chains, swords and fire, the Order's ruthless, steel-clad knights hunted all those they deemed strange for their ears or their stature. In Vizima, the Witcher picked up the bandit's trail. He learned they were members of Salamandra, a secret criminal guild. Brutal in their methods, they dealt in fistech, murder, and extortion. Geralt didn't know these were means to a darker girl. As the Witcher hunted Salamandra, he was drawn into the conflict between the Scoia'tael rebels and the Order of the Flaming Rose. The two sides. Order of the Flame, Order of the Phoenix. Guys, I'm telling you, they're similar. I don't know how similar they actually are, but they they remind me a lot of one another. It's finally clashed in the swamp near Vizima. Ew! Is that snake? Clashed in the swamp near Vizima. Knights of the Order and Scoia'tael fought a bloody battle while Geralt faced Azar Javid and the Professor. The mage felled Geralt with powerful spells leaving him as fodder for swamp monsters. Triss saved the witch's life. He recovered under her nurturing hand. She introduced him to powerful politicians and influential merchant guildsmen. The mood in the city was tense. Confined to ghettos, non-humans spoke openly of mutiny. There was no sign of the king. Geralt found allies for his struggle against Salamander. The witcher resumed his hunt. He destroyed Salamandra's secret fist egg factories and killed the Professor. The Witcher found Azar Javid's hideout. This time Geralt was prepared and no spells the renegade mage threw at him could stop his sword. Yet the stolen Witcher's secrets were in the hands of another. Jacques That's de Alders, so cool. the Master of the Order. Provoked by the knights, non-humans rebelled. De Aldersberg responded, releasing his greater brothers, the horrific result of his experiments with the Witcher's mutagens. Vizima was in flames and dying. Enter Foltest and his army. The king summoned the Witcher and demanded the head of the Grand Master, a monster in human form and a usurper. The Witcher set out in search of Jacques de Aldersberg and the stolen Witcher's secrets. The Grand Master plunged Geralt into his vision of the future, where the Wolf's Blizzard would destroy the world and kill all, no matter their race or abilities. De Aldersberg wished to create superhumans, ensuring the survival of the human race. It was a vision Geralt rejected. He drove his sword through the Grand Master's heart and did well. For the vision was naught but a madman's nightmare. They say the King of the Wild Hunt appeared to claim De Aldersberg's soul. They say the Grand Master was an evil man, for the Wild Hunt comes only for the filthiest and most vile. They say only evil can vanquish evil, but those are only legends. In truth, Geralt recovered the Witcher's secrets, and Vizima proclaimed him a hero. Yet life is no fairy tale. One story ends, another begins. As the King handed the Witcher his reward, an assassin attacked. His cat-like eyes and medallion were unmistakable. But that is another story. Okay, I really liked how this one was made. Obviously, it was by the origin, the official, sorry, the official Witcher like channel for the drawings, the cinematics, the the effects, the story. That was really well done. Like that was really well done. The other one was in depth. I am glad I watched the first one because it mentioned the multiple love interests and stuff like that. I believe this is probably canon. That one you can choose. This one. But like the canon story of it. I like how it started, how it ended though. They say only evil can defeat evil. Oh, that was so well done. Okay, well, I 
feel ready to start The Witcher 2 now. I am actually very excited for it. I've wanted to start The Witcher 3 for such a long time and I'm really glad that I didn't go straight into The Witcher 3 and I am like gonna play Witcher 2 whilst also now knowing the story of The Witcher 1. I am so excited. I am like actually so so excited but that was that was literally amazingly amazingly done beautiful but anyway i have the witcher 2 installed i will start that the next video thank you guys so much for watching i hope you enjoyed and hopefully i will see you in the start of my witcher 2 series okay bye guys